The two Florida men atop the 2024 presidential field are in New Hampshire this week. Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis will be speaking at events about an hour away from each other. DeSantis, who is holding a town hall Tuesday with potential voters, is being criticized by the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women for planning his event on the same day Trump is speaking at their annual fundraising lunch. CBS News Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett joins me now. Major, you don't want to step on any toes in the careful <laughs> rules of New Hampshire politics, but um, let's use that as a jumping off point. It's right. been about a month since Ron DeSantis joined the race. What's the nature of the competition between the frontrunner Donald Trump and his closest challenger? By any measure, John, it's one-sided. Uh, former President Trump has, across the spectrum of polls in New Hampshire, on average about a 20 percent lead over Ron DeSantis. That is, Ron DeSantis has lost ground in New Hampshire since announcing formally his introduction into the presidential race. That is exactly what former President Trump wants everyone to know and wants them to permanently believe. The Trump campaign would like everyone in New Hampshire interested in this race to consider this race done and dusted, already over. The DeSantis campaign knows it has ground to make up in New Hampshire, Iowa, South Carolina, and knows this summer is going to be about that slow, painstaking effort to, if possible, chip away at former President Trump's lead. And that means being competitive. That means going head to head. That means, if necessary, angering some entrenched Republican groups, like you said, the New Hampshire Federation of Republican Women, who've been putting on this particular fundraising lunch and effort in New Hampshire for the better part of 70 years. So they have a history. But it's not all uniformly considered by them to be DeSantis doing something out of bounds. Some of the members of that federation have resigned because they think the statement put out criticizing DeSantis was overtly pro-Trumpian. That, they said, violated the Federation's longstanding neutrality. So, as you well know, having traveled New Hampshire as I have, John, all these things can become very personal, very localized, and very tit for tat. It's aggressive, it's competitive. That's the way New Hampshire politics has always been for Republicans and Democrats, and we're just beginning to see it play out in the Republican primary contest. One of the areas where Trump's challengers have tried to make inroads with his formidable lead is on the question of abortion. Yep. He has been, former President Trump has been criticized for saying abortion should be left to the states in the post-Roe world. But this weekend he spoke to evangelical voters about abortion in the U.S. and said the federal government should play a vital role. What do you make of that? You've seen him have uh, varying positions over the course of his career. Is that just his traditional um, embroidery of his positions, or does it suggest at all that his, his opponents are, in fact, succeeding in their attempt to make this an issue? Well, let's stick with the embroidery metaphor. That's threading a needle. A uh, vital role. That could mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. The federal government could have a vital role, one might argue, on the pro-life position or against abortion rights position by saying things about U.S. government policy relating to foreign aid or international interventions can be interpreted as hostile to abortion rights there. That's a vital role. You could have a vital role by appointing, quote-unquote, pro-life judges to district or appellate courts or the Supreme Court. Vital role can mean lots of things, but why do evangelical voters matter so much? Well, John, across all primaries and caucuses in the Republican Party, they constitute roughly 50 percent of those voters. In Iowa, that number is 62 percent, according to exit polls. And in South Carolina, estimated at 60 percent. Those are the two of the three most important early contests for the Republican calendar in 2024. Iowa, then New Hampshire, then South Carolina. So whatever former President Trump says in this space matters a great deal. But if you talk to those who are in this movement, they will say, of all the Republicans, no one like Donald Trump has a kind of buffer zone. Why? Because he appointed three conservative Supreme Court justices, and they led to the overturning of Roe versus Wade. And that puts former President Trump, they would argue, in a different and unique position where he will not be as scrutinized and not be judged as harshly as some of his other Republicans on the specificity of his abortion stance. All right, Major Garrett in Washington. Thanks very much, Major.